All right, so in the last video, we did some basic circuit analysis of a two-stage amplifier with a compensation capacitor CC, and we found that we had two, right, uh, two left half-plane poles, omega P1 and omega P2, and they're given by the expressions here, 1 over GM2 R1 R2 times CC and GM2 CL uh, over CL. We had a right half-plane zero, which was equal to GM2 over CC, and we had a DC gain or a low frequency gain that was equal to GM1, GM2, R1, R2. Now we, we note that all three of these factors, the two left half plane poles and the one right half plane pole cause negative phase shifts associated with their uh, pole, with the pole in zero locations. So we can write out a generalized expression for the phase margin. We have the phase margin is equal to 180 degrees minus the tangent of omega over omega P1, uh, tangent inverse, minus the tangent inverse of omega over omega P2, minus the tangent inverse of omega over omega Z1. Now, we're going to be looking for the specific scenario where we're far away from the pole at omega P1. In other words, omega is much bigger than omega P1. but omega is still much, much less than omega Z1. So our phase margin can be written in this scenario as follows, 180 degrees minus 90 degrees, because at frequencies much greater than omega P1, that arc tangent goes to 90 degrees. At frequencies much less than omega Z1, the arc tangent is close to zero degrees. And so what we're left with is this expression. Let's look at a Bode plot of this particular scenario. So we have a dominant pole, omega P1, that we'll put close to uh, the, uh, x the y axis. We have a second pole frequency, omega P2, and then we have a zero frequency that, say, is at a much higher frequency. Uh, so now let's plot our frequency response. We know that our magnitude response is going to start at a value of gm1, gm2 times r1 times r2. The product of that. It's going to start rolling off at 20 dB per decade. It's going to, let's make this a little bit shallower slope. It's going to have a slope change and then another slope change. So here, you'll know, excuse my drawing, the slope is minus 20 dBs per decade. Here, the slope is minus 40 dBs per decade. And after the zero, it ends up going back to minus 20 dBs per decade. Now, if we look at our phase shifts at the pole frequency, omega P1, the phase shift is 45 degrees goes to a total of 90 degrees. At the pole frequency omega P2, the phase shift should be 135. And at the pole frequency omega, or the zero frequency omega Z1, the frequency of the phase shift should be minus 225. So we should have a scenario that looks something like this. A total of 270 degrees of phase shift. And we've already learned how to size our compensation capacitor. It should be GM1 divided by omega P2 times the closed loop gain. Remember, this is for PM is equal to 45 degrees. If we want 60 degrees, we would say 1.73 times GM1 divided by omega P2 times ACL. This would be for PM is equal to 60 degrees. Now, the problem that we're going to run into uh, is that that uh, zero is going to cause us problems because we see that we have a scenario, a potential scenario, where we still have some gain, but our phase shift is greater than 180 degrees. So here's the 
the line where our phase shift crosses 180 degrees, we might still have some gain out here. And the zero is exacerbating this because it reduces the slope of the degradation of the gain. So what we're going to do in our next set of videos is learn how to deal with the fact that this compensation capacitor helped us by creating this very dominant pole omega P1, but it hurt us by creating this zero omega Z1. And we're going to learn that we can relocate the position of the zero so that we have less harm caused by the compensation capacitor in terms of, uh, of where that zero location is. We'll do that in the next set of videos.